um, I think it's long overdue. And I think um, it will give uh, those that are in this extremely uh, difficult circumstances a choice. Uh, a choice when, you know, their condition is progressive, uh, unbearable and painful. A choice where they're coming to their end of their life and they should have a choice of ending their life peacefully. And that should be done medically and legally. And in order to do that, the law has to change. And that's the reason why I'm putting this bill forward. David, why do you oppose it? Well, I mean, Gino there mentioned words like painful and unbearable, and I can't find them in his bill. And the definition of terminal illness is extremely broad. It says you're terminally ill if you've been basically read, uh, if you've been diagnosed by a doctor as having an incurable and progressive illness that can't be reversed by treatment, and a person is likely. Like what does likely mean? To die as a result of the illness or complications relating there too. So, like terminal illness, um, so no mention of unbearable pain. Um, or unbearable suffering. Uh, it's something that from which you are likely to die. So what's that, 51% likely to die? Um, what does it cover? Um, MS, motor neuron disease, Parkinson's, the biggest killer in England now of people is not heart disease anymore. Um, it's dementia. So does it cover dementia? So in other words, the patient, when they're of sound mind, could say, look, I actually want my life uh, to end and I want the doctor to administer to me a lethal um, drug that will kill me. So this is all completely up in the air with it. I mean, I just find the wording incredibly loose. And there's no mention of time limits, by the way. There's no mention like the law in Victoria and Australia, uh, which I still don't agree with, by the way, but it says um, the person has to be within tw uh, 12 months of death. There's no limit here. Uh, it could be the day after you get diagnosed with a terminal illness that's likely, mm. quote unquote, to kill you. Um, then the next day you could go to a doctor and say, I don't want to live with this. All right. And then the doctor will give you a lethal drug commonly known as poison okay. Okay, to kill you. So, I mean, quite apart from the principled issue, um, the bill itself needs to be properly examined. There's big problems with it. Well, we'll come back to the principled issue then mm. in a moment. But, you know, what would you say to, 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 to that criticism that the language is essentially too loose, that, that far no, too many no. people could fall into this? No, no, no. I think David kind of trivialises the issue around terminals. I mean, it's, it's it says in the, the legislation that you know, somebody's coming to the end of their life. You know, there's a very, very short period of time. Where does it say if, that? No, it does. It does. There's a short period of time when they come to their their, their terminal illness, and that's where that person is conversant uh, to make that decision. But right? uh, how short? Like, what? Where, where does it? What well, does it say uh, in the bill? Like, like as in, I know, at in what point are you coming I mean, to the end of your life? The terminal illness. Somebody could, you know, have could live for years in relation to a term limit, yeah. right? And somebody could live for less than two or three months, right? So it's it's, a, it's it's slightly broad. But somebody, and I actually trust somebody making that decision, they should have uh, a decision when they want, if they, it's again, it's, a, it's not mandatory, you know, by any means, but they should have a decision, a voluntary decision, when, if they want mm. to, uh, you know, have it uh, on their terms to end their life. But so it could be the, years so away from the end. So the timeline is subjective, just to get this right, as in the timeline, you're letting leaving the timeline up to the, the, the individual themselves. Yes, in the terminal illness. You know, as I said, it's how do you define a terminal illness? As I said, mm. it could be three months, it could be six months. Now, there's other legislation... But it is kind stick. of broad, though, isn't it? No. It, it would allow someone... You know, if you're allowing them to kind of subjectively to decide that, you know, they're, they're terminally ill, that again, someone could be diagnosed with prostate cancer and to say, look, it hasn't metastasized, it hasn't spread. No, yeah. But we can't treat it and it could kill you in about 10 years time. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, it's a fair point. But I would trust people in that circumstances. Obviously, people want to live rather than die. And every minute yeah. kind of, you know, is sacred. Uh, but in this situation, when they make that decision, and usually it's at the very, very end of that life kind of ending. And that's when they make that decision. David, I, suppose, like, I know I, I understand <clears throat> the, the issue about loose language, but I suppose the point is, by definition, you would have to be very close to the end of your life if you actually need assistance doing it. Like in the example I give, and, I, and I'm conscious as people listening who fall into these categories, and for yeah. any of them, I don't want to feel like any of us, all three of us are not trivialising it when we give examples. But, you know, that person with prostate cancer that I gave an example, they wouldn't need this bill because no. they'd be perfectly capable of ending their own life. Well, I mean, I mean again, um, I mean, talking about the specific bill, why doesn't it say like the Victoria law in Australia, which I, again, I mean, just to be clear, I don't agree with the Victoria law either because I'm against this in principle. But it's Gino's 
law that's coming it's before Savoy law. Savoy law. Oh, oh, well, okay, okay, Savoy okay, law. okay. It's your private member's bill that's yeah. that's coming before the Dáil tomorrow. So we got to discuss the bill. I mean, again, why doesn't it say six months, or why doesn't it say twelve months or three months, well, they, and 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 why doesn't it define terminal? illness more tightly, likely to die yeah, could be fifty one percent. But it doesn't where But the doctor it? has to decide that. The well, yeah, doctor but, has to decide that David, but you again, know? And this why this can they, 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 the these can be amended, which is probably more likely if it progresses to second st- towards stage it will be amended. Uh, but yeah, know? but I mean this is what you support now. Oh yeah I, mean, I do, the, I do support there's it. no time limit. <laughs> It's no, but just it's amazing t- to me. Well, I think that's it says in in black and white in the bill. Okay, but where? Is, where it's progressive, yeah. and a person is coming to the end of their life. But is, no, 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 but, but like where does it say that, you? Okay, where but, does it say they're coming to the end of their life? I, well, I don't see where it says well, that. It says it's unbearable suffering. W- w- and they're coming. Does where it, does it do- say unbearable suffering? Yeah. I don't see it. Well, it's in there. It's where in is it? It's there. <laughs> okay, I'll go look. All right, okay. Look, people can read the bill themselves, I suppose, and politicians, I hope, will read it before they actually vote on it or they debate it on the principal issue, David. Let's say that the language. Was tightened up and mm. and, it, and it mirrored what was in Victoria. Mm. Give me the principled argument why you were opposed to this. Um, well, for the same reason, the palliative care doctors are against it. Now we got to bear in mind, like the palliative care doctors professionally deal with people reaching the end of their life all the time. That's what they do. So in the hospices, for example, where they deal with people who might have terminal cancer or whatever terminal disease they might happen to have, because there's too many to mention. So here are the people who every day are confronted with such people. And I presume all these medical practitioners are compassionate people and are motivated by compassion and are motivated by compassion in their treatment of these people. And yet palliative care doctors are almost invariably against it. And one of the reasons, because I've heard a couple of them speaking on radio recently, there was a geriatrician called Professor Des O'Neill and there was a fellow, I think, um, Dr. Fergal Toomey, who's a palliative care doctor the other day in one of the radio stations. And they were saying because um, they are worried about the signal it will send to other terminally ill people that your lives actually, we understand if you consider your life not worth living and we understand that you will feel vulnerable from the signal it sends that a person who's diagnosed with Parkinson's or MS or motor neuron is is basically being told we, the state and the medical profession understand it if you are now contemplating ending your life and you can go to a doctor and get a lethal substance from a doctor who should only ever be giving medicine to people, not something that's going to kill you. Mike and Mead and Brendan and Wicklow both texted in, you know, making similar points. Dying with dignity, says Mike and Mead, used to be called hospice care, not lethal injection. And Brendan and Wicklow, the dying with dignity bill is a recipe for elder abuse. What do you say to their arguments and David's? Well, I don't don't believe them, you know, and I don't think it should be framed in a way palliative care against kind of um, this legislation. Um, And people should have a choice because there is there are cases where palliative care and the administration of morphine will not ameliorate some, you know, the this, this situations where people will find themselves in. And in that situation, um, I fundamentally agree that somebody should have a choice to end, you know, to end their life medically and legally on their own terms. Does it, as David was suggesting, does it automatically then devalue life no. post a, a diagnosis? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, this is more to do with living and dying. And uh, these are very kind of difficult circumstances that people find themselves under. Um, and I think what it comes down to is empathy, compassion and humanity for that particular situation where somebody is is facing a quite very painful ending to their life. And in that situation, I think somebody should have the choice. End our life. I know it's fun. It's, it's fundamental to everything that we we want in society and in our being is to live. But if somebody's in pain, you know, surely you give them a choice. Surely, surely. And I don't. I don't. I want never conflate. To sometimes we conflate this language about animals. We're not animals. We're human beings. But as a human being, I want to. You know, I'd like to see this. You know, given a choice. That's all. Um. I mean, you see again. Uh, I don't think we can over, uh, I, I mean, if you had a lot of these palliative care doctors coming out who, again, are dealing with people at end of life and who have often terrible diseases, um, if they were coming out and saying, yes, I think it would be more merciful if we have this, I think I'd be prepared to overcome my moral qualms about it. I would certainly be a lot more persuadable. But when you see them coming out against it, but that's they're, not very, all, David, that's no, but they're no. very people who are dealing with end of life care all the yeah. time. And so, you know, their voices to me 
are That's... highly convincing. I mean, l- l- like when my father died five years ago, he had dementia. It was getting more and more advanced. He had all kinds of other ailments because he was very old. He was 88. And me and my three sisters were all very concerned, obviously, that he would die with dignity and with maximum care and comfort. And that's what happened. So yeah, no, you can no, die no, course, with dignity without the necessity of a of lethal no, David, I agree medication with you. I agree no, with you. drug being given to I, you. David, I agree with you. But, but see, again... I know. But, but, but there, <laughs> are you saying there is, you know, circumstances where somebody has a very, very painful end of their life? Are you but, saying that that doesn't happen? But you see, well, of course. But you course. see... But no, but sh- no, somebody surely, but surely, why do you surely... Think? has the choice. But why do you think the palliative care doctors are against this? But then they're, they're not but all why, against but, but, it. But, but I, I mean, can't think but, of one who's who's in for who's for it. Why are they the very people you'd imagine would be on your side are not. So they're dealing with the sort of situations you're talking about all the time. But, the, and the they're, they're, not, but they're not they're not universally they're not but universally I can't think of any palliative care doctor who's yet come out. And the hospice foundation is built But it should, on we shouldn't caring, frame it that killing. way, David. You sh- you know you shouldn't frame it that it's you know, palliative care against end of life. Yeah, but why know, do you think against it though? What? Why are you generalising in relation to all well, palliative care? I don't, I don't know. know. Let, let, let me just, Gino, on that point, like, uh, why But why frame it? So why palliative f- care? But, but why frame it in that way? You know? Because it's, it's, a, it's a legitimate know, question Yeah, I know, but I, in a situation where somebody has come to the end of their life and they've been told that, you know, it could be very, very painful and we cannot ameliorate in relation to palliative care, that person should have the right to end their life peacefully. Well, that's the fundamental, uh, you know, basis of this legislation. Uh, someone has texted in about uh, unintended consequences, which we kind of flirted with a little bit about the, the, the language in the bill. But David as well brought up issues around dementia. And h- how will we deal with issues around whether well, people are cognizant to make these well, decisions? They have to be g- g- given the, the sheer amount of dementia patients that we have in the country and that we're going to have well, an increasing number in the well, years a, ahead. A, a, I mean, a person has to be completely conversant in that decision. And it, it would not be on the grounds of dementia by any means. My mother has dementia. You know, the thoughts of, you know, it's too even pain, on, too, it too, on, too, David, but, but, it's too but, even painful to think, right? No, it's but, too uh, painful to think, right? But this is a person that's cognizant, mm. that has not been kind of um, coerced in any way, right, in any way. Yeah. And they will make that decision. In other jurisdictions, it does happen. And on the grounds of age, disability or mental capacity, they would be disqualified. Is but, there a danger then, though, that people will make the decision before they get to the point where they fear they won't be compass mentis anymore? Because they don't want, as you're saying, if this is about ending pain, uh, unbearable pain, and you think, hold on, I've dementia here, and by the time I'm in, I'm in unbearable pain, I will not be compass mentis. So I'm making the decision now. It happens. It could happen. But on the grounds of dementia or Alzheimer's, a person would not be a qualified person. So on the grounds of that situation, but, it cannot happen. But, but, but I don't think that's the case because, again, terminal illness is so loosely worded but, in your bill. And a person is told today they have dementia but, and they're fully compass mentis today because yeah. it hasn't progressed enough. They tomorrow, under your bill, on, uh, you know, and persuade me otherwise, could go to a doctor and say, I want a lethal in, um, no, no, substance. But show me, because I no, don't they've, see... They've, 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 but you're defining term illness, a very, very, very broad term. No, but a very broad it, term. Your bill does it. People can read it for themselves. Yeah, it no, is they read it for having themselves. an incurable and progressive, progressive illness that cannot be reversed by treatment and is likely yeah. to die. Yeah. Okay? That yeah. is very, very broad. No and that's what your bill no, says. No, no, no.